But I'd like for my brother, he's going to share his heart, share some music. He's going to share some of his testimony. Amen. Um, we're going to share communion together. If you hear my accent, it's, I'm not a real redneck. I'm just a wannabe redneck. I come from <laughs> Finland. And I come uh, during the cold times in Finland. Uh, God called me and Sebastian to uh, drive around with this uh, John 316 car. I'm in a girl at the age of 18. She's still uh, my wife and we have four wonderful children. She's, uh, uh, I thank God for her because not many women would have been uh, by my side for so, so many years. It's a bad situation when day is night and night is day. Try to get away with all the sorrow and my pain. Show me the right way, I promise the train. I look at the sky and see a shining light. So I came to the Lord in 2006, but I didn't want to go to church. I, uh, I was still uh, using drugs. I managed to sober up, but I fell back. And in uh, 2006, in the end of the year, I came back from a tour and uh, saw my eyes were yellow. And they figured they had him cornered and this was the time for him to go. I don't think they correlated it with the Passover. They didn't think, well, wow, this is when the Lamb's blood was shed. They, they weren't thinking that when they were shedding Jesus' blood. But God was. He knew the symbolism of it. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Instead of the blood of an innocent lamb, literally like they used in Egypt, to avoid the death angel, here it is, the blood of Jesus. But they weren't thinking of those things. He was about to be rejected even by his father for a period when he took on the sin of the world uh, and died. But in his greatest hour of need, again, his disciples let him down. Oh, can you not? watch and pray with me but one hour remember he came back and the disciples were all asleep they must have drank too much wine but they were all asleep and he wakes them oh can you not just this is my hour of need can you not just watch and pray with me even one hour mm. same thing peace be with you look see the wounds at my side see my hands and he falls down and worships jesus my god and my king but how could he say, peace be with you? You see, in the Old Testament, our righteousness was strictly based upon our ability to obey and follow the law. And the whole system was set up around the law. You know, the law was the very first thing that God gave his people. Remember, when God wrote the Ten Commandments in stone and gave it to Moses, there was no Bible yet. Moses is the one who wrote the Pentateuch, the five books of the Bible. So there was nothing. There were a few men, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who had a relationship with the living God. The guy named Noah way back, you know, a few, several hundred years before that, that had heard from God. But, but so much before the Ten Commandments came, people really didn't know what God was, who he was, or what he expected of them. By faith. You do it by faith. One day at a time, one challenge at a time, one life situation at a time. You surrender that to Him and trust Him. And He carries you through that. Amen. Give Him a round of applause. God is faithful. There's millions of people out there who have testimonies about what Jesus has done in their lives. And uh, www.lifeinhim.tv, we only have 90 testimonies, but that's a place where we collect. When we travel, we meet people who have uh, met the Lord, had, uh, had miracles happen to them. And uh, this is just so. You can go there, log into that webpage, check out some episodes. 
follow the channel because uh, we can identify ourselves with each other and uh, get strengthened. Our faith will get strengthened when we hear about what Jesus has done in our time. Thank you and God bless you all.